Hello, it's me, Lance Nielsen from the Outcast Creative, a coalition of actors, writers, directors uh, from indeed not just the UK, but all over the world who met in lockdown and we create stuff. This is our channel where we also do reviews as well as uh, live interviews and performances. Uh, welcome to another episode of Gut Reactions. Last night, I went to see Straight Line Crazy, directed by Nicholas Heitner at the Bridge Theatre in London. That's near London Bridge or Tower Bridge, sorry. Uh, London Bridge is the closest tube if you wish to go. It is showing until the 18th of June. There are tickets available, uh, some at a reasonably priced £25. So do get yourselves along if you want to see it. Now, Straight Line Crazy is a sort of biographical uh, picture. It's a talking heads play about the life of Robert Moses. This is the man who invented the uh, highway or um, expressway uh, and started connecting New York to Long Island initially to all the wonderful beaches in uh, Long Island. And then he started building expressways through different parts of New York to connect them to different communities because he believed in the automobile, the car a thing, a mode of transportation that only the rich and middle classes could afford at the time that he was constructing all these places. Um, hints of racism in this play, I believe. Uh, really, uh, Robert Moses wanted to connect the rich and middle classes to the places, the beautiful places that he himself wanted to visit uh, with the people that he wanted to be there. Um, undertones in this, in this uh, character uh, he did not want the, um, uh, let's say, the non-white people to be in these places. And that is a theme which is explored in the play to some degree. Um, the first half is very much the setup. Uh, it's mostly set in his architectural office. And uh, working under Robert Moses are various other characters, including um, Samuel Barnett, who plays Ariel Porter. You have Siobhan Cullen. Uh, you've also got various other characters that we meet. Um, Helen Schillinger, who plays uh, Jane Jacobs. Guy Paul, who plays Henry Vanderbilt. Um, and uh, then a fantastic turn um, as Governor Al Smith, the very underrated, in my opinion, uh, Danny Webb, who's a bit of a British national treasure. Uh, also, we have uh, Alicia Bailey, uh, Alana Maria, Al Coppola, Ian Kirkby, um, Danny Mosley, who I'm going to say now is an actress to watch out for, and uh, Ma Mary Stillwagon Stewart. Uh, it's uh, got superb production design by Bob Crowley. It's lit by Jessica Hung Hang Yoon, um, sound designer George Dennis. Uh, the composer is George Fenton. I'm after going to have to Google that, but that sounds like the guy who did the music for the A Team, but I could be completely wrong about that. Casting director Robert Stern. So, um, is the show any good? Well, it hinges on two things. Um, one is the performances, which fortunately are first rate. I'm going to get into those in just a second. And the second is, um, how much do you find the, the, the subject interesting? Uh, Robert Moses is not a particularly likable man. Um, he's particularly distant and aloof in the first half of the play. He really comes to life in the second half, as does um, uh, Ray Fiennes, who's um, um, portraying him. Um, uh, I found that um, he was a character who was difficult to get to know in the first half, and I, I really only got to see a different side to him when uh, Governor um, uh, Al Smith, uh, forgive me, uh, who's played by Danny Webb, uh, comes on um, and uh, nails him down at his uh, office. Um, this is a fantastic scene. This is two British heavyweight actors going at each other with tremendous force and it's an absolute joy to watch um danny webb um just was a, his energy was amazing uh, i forgot completely that i was looking at the actor and was entirely uh, tricked into believing that al smith himself uh, was actually on the stage uh, this was a performance um of his life i've seen danny webb on stage four or five times never seen him do a character like this before absolutely fantastic and first rate uh, ray fines has Possibly the hugest number of lines to learn in a play ever. He did not uh, miss a beat the entire performance, despite somebody's phone going off for absolutely ages uh, at one point. And then um, what sounded like an iron bar being dropped down a staircase um, somewhere uh, towards front of house. Um, in the second half, 
uh, which also didn't cause any of the actors to miss a beat. It certainly made everybody in the audience wonder what the hell was going on. Um, but uh, the bridge is a fantastic space. Uh, the acoustics in the bridge are absolutely amazing. It's one of London's newest theatres. It's also one of my um, favourite theatres. I've seen four productions there now. All of them have been good to different degrees. And Straight Line Crazy is no exception. It is a niche subject. Um, it's going to be particularly uh, interesting to Americans and New Yorkers. The play has already secured a transfer there. They're taking all of the original cast, which I'm very pleased to hear, um, to, to New York for this. And I believe it will be uh, opening sometime around October. I think they're rehearsing September, October. Um, but I might be wrong on the dates of that, so um, do check that out. Now, this is on, as I said, um, until the 18th of um June. Do I have any criticisms about it? I do have a couple. I think the first half is a little bit too long. I think the first half could lose 10 minutes. Um, there's a bit of repetition of information um, in the script by David Hare, uh, who's more than a competent playwright, but I, I just feel that there's a bit too much waffle in the first half um, with um, Moses's character, um, and that could be trimmed down. So I think they should look at cutting the first half a little bit. The second half cracks past. It's really fast. Um, you don't really uh, notice the time go by. Um, the second half focuses more on um, the obstruction to Moses's plans by various community leaders um, because, of course, he didn't care uh, whether he destroyed um, uh, the communities that were in the Bronx or wherever, as long as he got to build his roads for the middle classes. And so various um, black community leaders uh, come forward to try and oppose him. I'm going to give a particular shout out to Alana Maria, who is cracking uh, in her role. I would have liked to have seen a bit more of her in the play. In fact, um, her character uh, was really interesting. Um, you also have uh, Alicia Bailey, who... Um, uh, actually works for the architectural firm and is kind of betraying her own, own community and is uh, conflicted there. Uh, Danny Mosley, I believe, understudies that role and just did a, a week's run in that part uh, as well. Um, but she also plays uh, the small role of Carol Amos at the community uh, meetings. I've seen Mosley in a couple of things before. And like I said earlier, she is one to watch out for. So um, do check her out. Another actor who I also have been keeping my eye on is Samuel Barnett, who plays Ariel Porter, a sort of prodigy of uh, sorts of uh, Moses. He had a fantastic performance recently in Four Lives, um, a superb drama about the Barking Side uh, murders, which of course had a tremendous impact on London's gay community. If you haven't seen that drama, make sure you watch it. Um, Samuel Barnett has a fantastic supporting role in it and he's very emotionally affecting in that role uh, i'm going to also give out shout outs to helen schillinger and guy paul uh, they were both very good watch out for the butler as well he steals um every scene he's in um uh, do i recommend this play overall yes i do um it's got solid performances that even if the subject itself isn't of interest will certainly captivate you and it's it's a pure joy uh, watching um, Webb and Fines um, in their sparring uh, session. Um, you can get seats that are reasonably priced, and that's one of the things I like about this theatre. They do make the seats affordable. This is a big problem with London theatre. Now, you only had to look around the audience last night, and I have to tell you, this is one of the first times I've been to the theatre recently, and I didn't see a single black person in the audience. In fact, I think the entire audience last night was white um pretty much it was you know I, I mean there was a lot of people there so i'm not saying i saw every face but um i looked around um the theater and and i when i'm in when i am in the in interval what i do is i move around and i listen to the conversations and i'm very interested to hear what people think about the play and um there were a lot of Americans there and they were very, they knew the subject. There were people from New York there that who, who just thought, wow, I'll play about this subject. This is fascinating. So I think this is going to be a big hit in New York uh, for, for New Yorkers. Um, outside of that spectrum, the subject may not be that interesting for people, but the performances are great and it's worth seeing the show for those alone. Um, so I am going to recommend that you do go and see it, but I, I, I would like to see theatre um, like the Bridge Theatre, more uh, accessible. The, the 
there are tickets that are affordable but in this in this age of austerity that we're now in and it's going to get worse um i have a horrible feeling that our theatres in London um, are going to be populated by tourists and the middle classes. And I really hope that that changes. I, I really hope we see proper outreach work going into communities or giving communities um, affordable tickets or even doing a performance specifically for certain communities where the tickets are free. Um, I don't, sorry, I don't want this uh, uh, review to turn into a political uh, rant, but um, uh, I feel like I'm in the play. But, you know, it, that troubles me um, about London theatre at the moment. And I think it does need to be said. And I know that the Bridge Theatre are doing lots of things um, along that vernacular. But even so, we can do more. We can do more. So, so that's Straight Line Crazy at the Bridge Theatre. A quick plug for the outcast before we go. We're back on stage again this year uh, with our play False Accounts, uh, exposing the post office cover up. Uh, I think you can guess what the play is about. And um, I am going to be directing it again, um, I, I believe, uh, co-directing it with co-founder of The Outcast, Dickon Tolson. Uh, I'm writing the script right now, but we have dates for Birmingham at the Joint Stock Theatre. It's the 18th to the 22nd of October, and I believe tickets will be going on sale very shortly. Um, so if you can get along to Birmingham, please do. Uh, we also do hope to have the play in London shortly after that, but we are still actively searching for a venue and trying to talk to various theatres. Um, so do check out uh, the Outcast stuff. You will see other productions of ours that we did online in lockdown, which is when we all met and came together. Um, but anyway, do go and see Straight Line Crazy. Bridge Theatre is a wonderful space. It's one of the best theatres in London. Credit to Nicholas Heitner for making it so. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again for another one of these really soon. Don't forget to check the channel tonight, live at eight o'clock. I'm doing an interview with the fantastic actor, stunt choreographer and swordsman, Anthony DeLongis, who's been in one of my favourite films of all time, The Sword and the Sorcerer, but he was a guest enemy in six episodes of Star Trek Voyager. Uh, he's worked with everybody um, in film and television out in LA, um, and he's, he's had a career that spanned nearly five decades. So I'm interviewing him tonight live at eight o'clock. Do check it out on the Outcast Creative channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again real soon.